Although I would not eat sugary foods, I did crave watermelon. On Thursday nights, Daddy would watch wrestling on television. Mommy would set up the stool in the kitchen because she did not feel well enough to stand for long periods of time. And she would bake cookies and cinnamon buns for Daddy, Daddy's co-workers at IOCC. And when I was pregnant, because they're old enough now and down the road, I could mean to tell you this and not get it out or say it to you and you not notice it. Um, I bled a little bit at first. So I went to the doctor and um, he said, or someone said, that um, the common thought was, um, if you keep the baby, you keep the baby. And if you lose the baby, you lose the baby. Well, you were coming now. For your example, hey. And um, so I went home and I uh, put myself on bed rest. Was I ever sick? And uh, because when I stood up, uh, it used to kind of feel like you might fall out. And I mean, I, I know that's just our silly worry. So um, even up until I was sure at six or seven months that, you know, you were big enough that if you fell out, you wouldn't be a preemie. You don't want to be a preemie. <laughs> that's not for us. And um, I uh, always tried to sit and um, just walk around gently, carefully, and concentrate on where you were. And um, so when I was cooking for Dad, I didn't stand on my feet. I, uh, and that's why I didn't cook too much for myself, because even though I love to cook and would have been better off having my home-cooked food, I certainly was too dizzy sick. But by uh, six or seven months, um, I still was, you still weren't ready to come out. But I still would sit on a stool rather than stand in the kitchen, and that way I wasn't putting any pressure on you or stressing you out. And uh, there you go. Those are the things that go through mommy's heads. It doesn't matter how many books you read. It still feels like you might fall out. And obviously some babies do. Okay. And, and you know, as the ball tell you all, you know, and then, ha, oh, because you didn't let her fall out, then you couldn't get her out at all. But really, I mean, talk about the devil and God, right? Well, anyway, let's just keep going. We had discovered in the autumn of 1999 that I was pregnant. Poor Grandpa Joe had not been well. He encouraged us to have a baby for him to see, as he did with Uncle Jeff, Uncle Richard, and their wives. Aunt Isabel had Elizabeth the year before you were born. We had just been going to our doctor, Dr. Manny, to see that you were on your way when Aunt Kelly had Haley in December. We kept the news to ourselves as this was a busy, eventful time for Daddy's family until we were sure I was really pregnant and we were told everyone on and we told everyone on Christmas Eve of 1999 Not a competition the winter was a cold one i was not working we Mostly only went out for doctor's appointments, you and I. A few of our friends dropped by to visit. Nana visited often before we knew it. It was spring, just like in Little Bear on the longest winter. I had chosen her crib and furniture. We were ready. Then you were born. We 
were still, we were and still are so very, very happy and proud. We changed the words to the song on the first page of the photo album and we both sang it to you at the hospital and later as a lullaby. Mommy and Daddy had a baby. Oh my Lord. Mommy and Daddy had a baby. Oh my Lord. Mommy and Daddy had a baby. Oh my Lord. Down in Labrador. July 15, 2000, the nurse, nurses were recording information about you. They took your fo footprint and gave Daddy a copy. You had very clear lines in your feet, foot. You had, at the time, little red burn marks on your feet and the backs of your hands from the monitors that were attached. You could still see them at times for years later. Mommy finally arrived on July the 20th, 2000. The nurses were amazed at how you perked right up. Hungry, no doubt. Or in need of a good Mommy Emma heart-to-heart -heart chat. I love you. I love you, I love you, I love you. So much more relaxed now. Even if they try to force the feedings, you still have all the same time in between. Tubby though, hey. Okay, there's bath time for you. This is what that was about. Time for bath time. You're doing okay. Having a good rest. July the 25th, 2000, on my belly with Daddy. July the 25th, 2000. What you talking about? I'm talking to God. July the 25th, 2000. Well, finally, I got a couple of minutes rest. Ah, uh, these are pictures usually that they took while we were um, not our camera. So the nurses were taking them. Polaroids and things. There you are in your crib. There you are. I think maybe when they moved you out to uh, the ICU, the recovery. Area. Not positive. And there you are. Um, getting bath time again, I guess. Getting you ready for bed. My goodness. And um, there you are again. So sleepy, sleepy. There you are. Sleepy, sleepy. Mommy's singing to you. Where's Dad? Where's Daddy? Look at Dad. 
Another nap on the sparrow. Shh. I don't know. You put her in the room.